Hello and welcome to this edition of FOCUS, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. I'm your host, Information and Education Manager Philomena Robertson. In this edition, we focus on water safety. As an island territory surrounded by water, maritime and general water safety are major concerns in the British Virgin Islands. The BVI has been fortunate not to have a high incidence of boating accidents, despite a sizable boating community. However, the incidence of drowning is an ongoing concern for the Virgin Islands, particularly at the Bats in Virgin Gorda, one of the most popular beaches in the BVI, with in excess of 100,000 visitors annually. Despite its international appeal, 10 deaths have occurred at the BATS in the last 10 years. The National Parks Trust is the agency responsible for managing natural and historic assets in the BVI. And in 2013, the NPT established two exclusive swimming areas at the BATS and the neighboring Devil's Bay to help improve safety by eliminating access to the beach by motorized craft. A flag system has also been instituted with red flags being flown during periods of heavy swells to caution individuals against swimming. Persons entering the beach from the marine side of the park are also encouraged to use life jackets or other flotation devices. Earlier this year, the NPT met with its partners to discuss the issue of safety at the BARTS. NPT Director Mr. Joseph Smith Abbott outlines some of the things discussed at that meeting. Our aim really was to, first of all, garner the input as to what has been working well and what areas of improvement there may have been uh, with respect to safety. Over the last uh, tourist season in particular, we were able to establish a swim exclusive area at both Devils as well as the Bats proper and we have limited the number of tenders and boats within that area itself. For several years now we have managed a system of flags that are located at the top of the bats and at each of the two corresponding beaches at both the bats as well as Devils. And those, those are part of the national effort of course because there are other beaches that are flagged as well. Um, we tend to of course discourage the use of the beach um, during times when we may have swells or real ground swells or real rough conditions and that is obviously signified by fla racing hoisting the red flags and then we maintain a, a yellow flag just so that users always maintain a stance of caution and of course preparedness for for any eventualities that may arise the Feedback we've received has been varied with respect to the establishment of the swim area in particular. Um, obviously bathers and users of that area feel very confident and very uh, comfortable with at least the ability to not have to compete, let's say, with uh, motorized um, tenders and boats. Uh, of course, that will obviously bring up the issue of whether we will want to then consider some kind of access into those beaches um, for for boats and that is something that obviously ha was uh, discussed during the meetings as to whether or not uh, boating would be allowed within those swim areas in some limited manner and I think that there's still ongoing discussions around that. Certainly from the point of safety, uh, the first measure of safety really should be one of a personal nature and, and that's the most important thing I think that um, we can emphasize at the bats or any given beach, um, which is first to understand the conditions that may prevail, environmental conditions prevailing on the day, whether seas are rough, whether, um, of course, there is a considerable amount of um, waves and, and physical evidence, and sometimes, unfortunately, um, especially with swells, it is not always visible, so certainly you want to exercise uh, absolute caution before getting into the water. We. Uh, in particular because of the number of users and the varied uh, extent of, uh, of expertise, of strength um, of the various types of users using uh, the bats and those beaches, we also encourage the use of personal flotation devices, whether they be um, 
safety jackets or tubes or anything that will assist that swimmer to reach, especially from the mooring field, and there, there are a number of moorings that obviously are located within the, the larger area, and those individuals now approaching and, and, um, and trying to gain access to the beach from the sea, we definitely strongly encourage the use of some personal flotation device, whether that be from the bare boating side or whether that be from, from the various numbers of tours. Uh, we have quite a number of different types of users with skills that are considerable and uh, range considerably and therefore we would want to emphasize that irrespective of whether you are a seasoned, um, strong swimmer or you are just um, coming into the water for the first time and to enjoy the bats, to do so in a safe manner by, again, uh, some mechanism or some means of, of flotation. Were there any specific additional recommendations coming out of that um, meeting that you had as to the way forward? Well, I think, first of all, the, the strongest uh, recommendation made was to really heighten the amount of awareness and information uh, given to users perhaps prior to getting to and especially at the time when they're about to enter into the water. So a lot of the educational um, measures as to what to do under a specific set of conditions when the environmental conditions may change or just to be safe on that side of, of things. Well, certainly that was one of the, the greatest uh, sets of recommendations uh, resulting from that. Secondly, there is some cross-training and enhancing of the capacity and the skill sets of the first responders, whether those responders uh, may be found within the trust or otherwise. So really just being able to ensure that there is enough capacity to respond, to be able to allow for, um, for any very number of incidents that may, that may occur to be able to respond to those. Okay. Now, the NPT and its partners, first responders, the DDM, we can all recommend that persons um, use safety measures. But the onus is really on the individual to take responsibility for their own personal safety. Uh, do you want to elaborate on this and, you know, implore upon persons to put their safety first? I think that the first thing that needs to be um, understood is no matter whether beaches have a presence of lifeguards or whether, for instance, uh, you may have all of the instructional materials, educational materials that may have been afforded, provided to an individual prior to that experience, uh, information that may be provided on site, that the moment that that person steps into the water, um, they do have to be aware of their environment and certainly be aware of the conditions, the prevailing conditions on the day, especially um, especially as they are using the water. We want people to really truly appreciate the experience. Uh, it's a beautiful setting, of course, that, um, that allows for much enjoyment and certainly from the, the point of view of uh, the trust at least, uh, we've had a lot of experience now in what the environmental, the prevailing environmental conditions may be to allow for an individual, say, to enjoy that area uh, in, a, in a safe manner. And that means that if, for instance, wardens give, may give the instruction to not enter the water, um, I think people need to respect that. Uh, first and secondly, and equally important, is when we are red flagging a beach not to really enter the water and to refrain from using the moorings. We do honor, for instance, um, the permits that we sell for the use of the moorings at the top of the bats. And we want to also emphasize the fact that the bats uh, is not closed. Even when we red flag a beach, individuals can still enjoy the caves and still enjoy the shore, but certainly without having to get into the water. And that's, I think, the most important thing, that when an instruction is given, um, by a warden or someone who may be a little more knowledgeable as to how the individual may come under some um, threat or hazard, that, um, that certainly that really should be respected and understood, uh, and that there are many other opportunities for enjoyment um, 
during that, that visit. Drowning can be caused by a number of factors, including lack of education about water safety or local conditions, lack of safety advice about things such as rip current, lack of protection, for example, no flotation device, lack of supervision, and inability to cope with conditions, for example, a weak swimmer facing a strong surf. Lifeguards are used worldwide to supervise persons in what is usually a defined area, such as beaches, pools, or water parks. Lifeguards are strong swimmers and trained in first aid and certified in water rescue. In the BVI, there is a team of lifeguards attached to the Conservation and Fisheries Department. However, their numbers are not sufficient to monitor all of the beaches in the BVI. Mr. Zachary Stout has been a lifeguard for five years. I caught up with him at his post at Josiah's Bay, where he explained the duties of a lifeguard. Most of us, we go into the office and we sit at a desk um, for our job, but you come out to the beach. Tell us about a typical day for you as a lifeguard. Okay, well, pretty much when I come down to the beach, I sit down, look at the waves and, and also the water. And it's my job to put up the appropriate flag. Also set up my equipment. And it's mostly when beach goers come down on the beach to pretty much tell them the dangers that's going on today. And it's, it's all about advising people, look over here is the most safest place to swim, over here is a rip current. So it's help helping them actually spotting rip currents as well. And pretty much, yeah, that's a normal day for me. Okay. Um, and I'm sure during the past five years you would have had the opportunity to rescue persons. Do you have any stories that come to mind? Can you share some of them with us? I, I can actually. Uh, when I was working in King Garden Bay, this is a few years ago, some people got trapped in a flash rip. Flash rip just comes out of nowhere and just pulls them out to sea. So I went out, it was a couple actually and they were on their, their honeymoon. So I went out, Damien was working with me at the time. We went out to get them. The wife was pushing her husband under the water. So I told Damien to get the guy and I rescued the girl. And she was still picking, freaking out, panicking, panicking. To the point that speaking to her, you couldn't actually get through to her to talk to her. Because once that survival instinct kicks in, yes, it's only about their life and themselves. So. I just got her, I let her dunk me on the water because it was fine with me and I just swam with her underwater just gently and safely until she came in and when she was standing up she was still freaking out and I'm like you can walk you know you're actually safe right now so when they're in that panic mode yeah it's really hard to deal with them and also down here Josiah's Bay there was a guy with his daughter his daughter went out swimming in the rip right here she got sucked out in the rip and I was taking off my shirt to go rescue her, but the father actually ran out to help her as well. He got into trouble as well, so instead of saving one person, I'm now having to deal with two. So I, I got both of them out and swam both of them in, into safety. And so in the future, if your children do get into some sort of trouble, it's better for them not to actually go help them because we are here on the beach saving you guys lives yes now do you think people are sufficiently concerned about their safety I mean they come to the beach and they just go in the water and they sort of have no regard for anything um, you've been a lifeguard now for five years yes. what is your perception about people's take on water safety people who come on the beach just in their mind say hey we're just out to have a good time the last thing on their mind is actually getting into trouble or dying but my advice is if you do actually come on the beach if you're doing one thing stick to that one thing so if you come into the beach to swim swim because normally we get people who come to the beach to drink and then go swimming so now we have to deal with last time we were down here a guy actually got drunk really bad so he was drowning in waist depth because he was so drunk yes yeah, so if you come on the beach to drink then stick to drinking. If you're coming on the beach to swim, swimming is fine. Just as long as... My advice to people, if they're coming on beaches, come to beaches where lifeguards are patrolled beaches by lifeguards. And, and also, 
lots of water because the sun we we deal with a lot of heat, heat exhaustion cases for people and yeah okay so you actually led into my final question there by giving us a couple of tips about water safety any other safety tips you can offer at this time to persons who utilize beaches in the bvi yes if you don't know how to swim I, my advice to you would be to learn how to swim that's that's we deal with so many people who don't know how to swim always going in the water also to take note on on the flags we're flying because many people walk right past our flags don't even read or anything also it's best to check in with a lifeguard and be like hey where's the, where's the best place for me to swim right now so all those things could be very helpful as well safety at sea also includes boaters by virtue of it being a multi-island territory and its world-renowned reputation as an attractive sailing destination, boating in the BVI is quite popular. Information Officer Feliza Fenty of the Department of Information and Public Relations had a discussion with Mr. Phil Aspinall, who's the immediate past president of the Virgin Islands Search and Rescue, Visor, and Officer Lincoln Leibert of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, Marine Unit. Is good sea safety? Common sense. Common sense. Yes, indeed. You, know, you need to know your environment. You need to know... If you're at sea and you're on a boat, you need to know if anything goes wrong, where emergency equipment are, fire extinguisher, mm -hmm. anchors if the engine stops, so you can stop the boat and then deal with the emergency. Mm -hmm. If you're on a passenger vessel or a vessel that, um, you know, between here in St. Thomas, for example, you need to know where the life jackets are. And the vessels are very good. They label them. They tell you where they are. The kiddies ones are over here. The adult ones are here. Just make yourself aware of, the, of your surroundings so that you know where the door is, you know where the life jackets are. And just Common sense, you know, if um, keep an eye on keep an eye on things. Officer Leibard, you have anything to add to what Mr. Aspinall said? Well, yeah, I would add that in boat safety, you do have to deal with common sense. Is that's true? But you need to know you must have safety equipment, mm -hmm. life jackets, mm -hmm. flare. Because one never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And even if you're going, you don't know where you're going. Tell somebody where you're going. That if they don't, you don't come back in an even time, they could say, have a look and say, well, this fellow said he was going to this area. If they, anything come for a call, we could know, well, he went to the dogs, so we could start to look in that general area. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot of issues you have to factor inside there. In, in your line of work, do you find that a lot of persons, a lot of persons who own vessels, do they have inadequate number of life jackets or they don't have any at all? Do you find this happens often or or is it that? Very often and sometimes too often. What mm -hmm. seems to happen, you use it or you get it just for you bow it to get the boat registered in the first instance. Oh. And once your boat has been registered, you take it back. So then you are going to see without the proper oh. number of life jackets. That's unfortunate. That Cheating. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> you need to really look into that yeah. seriously. Yeah. Persons bar they borrow their stuff to get a boat registered, and in front of you, they're like, here is my. Yeah, they have everything that you require to mm -hmm. get it registered, mm -hmm. but it's not belonging to the boat. Mm. It's very unfortunate. You have anything that's, to no, add? That's, I didn't know that. That's kind of clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Aspen, anything else to add to it, Mr. No, no, he's right. The, the problem is if you're on a private boat, and, and you're going out to sea, then you, as, as Lincoln said, you should tell people where you're going. It's important because it's, it's a big sea, you know, and if, uh, you know, they call late at night and say, Johnny didn't come home. Okay, well, where did Johnny go? I'm not sure, you know, I mean, it's a huge area to try and start searching, especially in the dark, yeah. you know, at night and stuff, and, and that just cramps our style, for want of a better phrase. You know, it's, um, you need to know, I know some of the fishermen, they like to keep their little fishing areas secret and safe so that they can get the best catch, you yes, know, and they yes. don't want to tell their friends, well, the fish is really good over here, so <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to tell their friends, you know, because then they got it all to themselves. So um, I understand that, but at the same time, there should be somebody that they can trust to say, well, I'm going there. Yeah. And then if their boat breaks down and they don't come home or whatever, you know, then at least we know where we can go and look for them, yes. you know, and, um, and we, promise not, we promise not to tell his friends where we found him, you know, so. <laughs> At the very least. <laughs> yes. So, how can I be safer um, 
as I traverse the sea, if I'm just a regular person and I take the ferry, how can I be safer? What can I do to, to make a difference in my sphere? Well, as I said at the beginning there, you know, I mean, just make, sure, make yourself aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. you know, know where the exit is, know where the life jackets are. Listen to the, the, the tannoy at the beginning. I mean, on the ferries I've, I've traveled on lately, they're all very, very good at giving announcements as to where the stuff is and, and what they expect of you, you know. If it's rough, stay in your seat, you know, until you're safely tied to the dock there. Um, they will make those announcements. Just pay attention to them, you know. It's, um, it is for your own safety at the end of the day, obviously. Some people travel ferries every day and are far more familiar with the ferry than people who may only travel once a year, you know. Yeah. So it's, you get on an airplane, you get in your car, you do your basic safety stuff to yourself. You need to know um, your own limitations for want of any, right. you know, for want right. of a better phrase, you know. So it's just knowing where everything is, really. Off the library. Yeah, and just be careful because all of us we get on a boat and once the boat is going to dock, we want to get out first. Which is important because the wave could hit the boat against the dock harder than the captain would really like it to take it there. Yeah. And you can fall down, work some part, then who who is responsible? Yeah. We just need to stay in our seat. Right, so sit down until when the boat is properly dark and then everybody gonna get off anyhow, everybody gonna be going to the line, everybody gonna be processed the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, just manage your time, manage your day. And they usually make you wait while they unload all the bags and everything anyway. So there's, when you get to there, you've got to stand in line. And then, and then there is, as, as he said, if a wave comes while you're all stood up there waiting to get off, then um, you can hurt yourself, you can hurt yourself or, or bump into somebody else and hurt them. Mm -hmm. You know, you may come off OK, but the guy in fell and bumped into something, you know, and, it's, uh, mm -hmm. and it was down to you, you know, so. Um, Suppose someone falls overboard. What do I do if I'm? I, if I'm in a small vessel, I went fishing, and someone falls overboard, or I suppose I'm on a ferry. I know those are two different questions, but take, well, take your time. That would be an easy section if you're on a ferry boat, and that's why it's always important to have a lookout, because it wouldn't be right for the captain to be maneuvering and still looking for somebody overboard. Right. Once he have a lookout, the lookout will keep his eye on the person who is in the water, and he maneuver the boat around that person. Okay. Okay. And he must always keep the engine away from that person. Okay. And according to the, the, the rules, he said that you must go 60 degrees away from where the person fall, then turn 20 degrees, and then come around and pick him up upwind. Okay. Wow, I, di I didn't know that. Ms. Aspinall, you have anything to add to that? No, it's the same thing. I say that the, the, the key to all of that is that somebody keeps an eye on the person in the water. So obviously, if, if there's only two of you, then as, as Lyman says, that you, you've got to be cap maneuver your boat, and it can be very, very difficult if mm -hmm. you're the only, you know, you're the only person left on the boat trying to watch where they are. Because if there's current, there's wind, if there's everything else, you you need to make sure that you're looking at them, yeah. and then maneuvering your boat. So, uh, does that mean you have to go to sea with three people in case somebody falls over? I mean, it's 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 all very, very difficult to sort of police that sort of thing. But um, if as long as there's more than somebody else, somebody needs to keep an eye on that person. And whether that's a ferry or, or, or a small boat, you know, I mean, whoever saw the accident happen should be the one that keeps an eye on everything because they've seen it right from the beginning. You right. know, and they should just scream, man overboard. Um, if you're on a vessel, there is a man overboard button on the, on the VHF radio and um, on the GPS plotters and stuff so that the position is immediately saved. So if you go back and, and, and you're having trouble to find them and other people come to join, you can actually tell them exactly where they fell overboard yeah, because the, the electronics will, will save that information for you, you know, right. so that helps as well. Okay. But as, as Lincoln says, the, the big clue is keep somebody, keep them staring at them. And because it's, it's comforting for the people in the water too, that they know they can wave to somebody and somebody can see them and wave back, you know, and they know that you're coming back for them and that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, so yes. if, they, if all they see is the boat going away, you know, the <laughs> they can panic too, you yes. know. So, uh, mm -hmm. so if there's that relationship between the person in the boat and the one in the water, then I think that's comforting for want of a better phrase while you're, uh, you know somebody's seen you and that they're looking out for you, you know. So what role does Visar play? What role does the police, do the police play? in the event that there's an accident, or just generally? What role do you both play in the community in terms of sea safety and awareness? I think for, for, for Visar's point of view, we're, we're more reactive, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we have, um, you know, events like this, this broadcast, and, and we, we lecture in the schools and stuff, particularly on Safe Boating Week and things like that, you know, in, in the aid of prevention. Mm -hmm. But um, having 
sadly, I mean, most of our responses are reaction, so to speak, to an event. Yes. You know, yeah. as as visor, whereas as is needed. As uh, is exactly. Needed. I mean, the, the police and libel will answer, but I mean, they're they're more out there in sort of a proactive, making sure the boats are safe legally, and this that. The next thing, they're registered. They've got all this, this safety equipment and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's far more proactive in the defensive side of things, and, and where we try and promote that, if you know what I mean, as a, as a, as an organisation, then typically we are sort of reactive, you know, we have to respond to right. sadly something that's gone wrong, you know, right, rather than right. be out there just patrolling and, and, and trying to prevent that sort of thing. Right. When it comes to the police, the police play a wide role because we have so many agencies that we assist in our day-to-day uh, -day job, like mm -hmm. fishery, the conservation of fisheries. Yes, yes. We assist them, we assist the Port Authority. Right. We, customs work together. So it's a a wide range, but when it comes to like accident, we would respond to an accident, we get a call, we go out, we deal with the investigative side of it. Mm -hmm. So we collect statements, mm. photograph the vessels, make note as to where the accident did occur by the GPS mm -hmm. setting, and come back and we investigate it and we inform the shipping and registry. And then they would say, well, them is the person who, those are the ones who would say, charge for this or charge for that. Mr. Aspinall, I know that you are part of the subcommittee, PI, uh, for the National Disaster Management Council. What other messages or information uh, will we be hearing throughout this month, through the month of April? Well, various sort of um, enhancements on this show and other stuff is going out through the, through the radios. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to pick it up on social media. You know, I think we're Facebooking and Twittering and doing all the rest of it. Uh, I don't. But <laughs> I know it's going out through there, but ZBBI, you know, there'll be lots of sort of little broadcasts, little snippets of information or little lengthier programs just uh, reminding people that safety at sea is important. Yes. Officer Leida, Leibard, you have um, a mantra that you were quoting earlier about safety at sea. Well, I, I just believe that everybody, we have a big boating community mm -hmm. and all of us should be mindful of safety when we leave to use the boat, whether for whatever reason, safety should be first and paramount. And I would just say safety at sea is good for all of we. <laughs> I like that one. Mm -hmm. Safety at sea is good for all of we. Simple um, as that. Are there any other words of um, wise words that you'd like to give to persons in the public to remind them to be safe or any, anything just quick that that has come to mind that I missed throughout this interview. I just I mean it's just suddenly occurred to me that people go to sea in boats and stuff their families go out a day outing and everything you know it's fun and all the rest of it and maybe there are members of that boat that can't swim there's no reason why they can't go to sea they're, they're in a boat and stuff you know but maybe the non-swimmers should be made to wear their life jacket at all times you know so if they do as we discussed man overboard then they're in the jacket they're going to float and they can be thing because um, I mean, sadly, you know, we live on an island and everything else, and um, it's uh, difficult for some people to comprehend why some people can't swim, but that's, that's the reality, you know, and um, I think that um, if you are on a smaller private vessel and the waves are going to have more of an impact on that small vessel rather than a ferry and what have you, you know, then if there are non-swimmers, then I think common sense should prevail and they should be in a life jacket all the time and, um, and not be embarrassed by that, you know. It's, yes. it's, it's um, tragically, we've seen in the news of late that people have drowned, you know, and it's... Um, whether they can swim or not, I don't know. But okay. um, but obviously that has a big impact. You know, if you if, um, if you are a non-swimmer, then the jacket will save you, you know, without doubt. Yeah. Mr. The whole point. Mm -hmm. Have a plan. Look at the weather before you leave home, because you could go out on a flat day. A squall come in. The weather change. Mm -hmm. So have a plan. Right. Mr. Aspinel is saying that if you can't swim, wear a life jacket. I believe if you're going out in a boat and you don't have a cover to keep water off of you. You should wear, everybody, but you could swim or not, should wear a life jacket. Right. Because things happen. In most cases, it's not people who can't swim, Joan. It's good swimmers. Oh. It all depends on how you fell in the water. Like a, a bad a tide catch you? Or yeah, the boat could hit you. It's not strong well, enough. Yeah, exactly. You, you can get a bump on the head as you go overboard, you know, yeah. and, and you're not even conscious. Well, and if you, you have swim. a life jacket on, no, he's right. at least you'll yeah. be a He's right. Wait, you'll float you. Yeah. Even though you get knocked out, you'll float you, and then somebody could come and resuscitate or something. And probably that might save your life. Accidents are inevitable. 
but by instituting the necessary safety or precautionary measures, their incidence may be reduced. Here are some safety tips for persons at sea. Check local weather conditions. Pay attention to safety notices and warning flags. Remain alert while in the water. Do not swim while under the influence of alcohol. Never swim alone. Make sure young children or inexperienced swimmers wear life jackets in and around water. Pay close attention to children and elderly persons. If caught in a rip current, stay calm and do not fight the current. Swim parallel to or along the shore until you are out of the current. Once free, turn and swim towards the shore. If you cannot swim to the shore, float or tread water while heading towards the shore. If you cannot make it to the shore, wave your hands, splash water, call for help, anything to get attention. If someone is in trouble in the water, get help from a lifeguard. If one is not available, have someone call 911. Throw the victim something, anything that floats, a life jacket, a water cooler, an inflatable ball, and yell instructions on how to escape the current. That brings us to the end of this edition of Focus, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. I'm Philomena Robertson, the Information and Education Manager at the DDM. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. And remember, be safe at sea.